Welcome to vlog 27. We continue in our studies of Philippians by looking at chapter 2 verses 1 to 4. In this passage Paul is exhorting the Christians to live in complete unity with one another. Sadly today we hear of many churches that have had disunity, divisions and splits and it seems that the threat of disunity was a very real possibility at Philippi. We know that two women were the loggerheads, Euodia and Syntyche, mentioned in chapter 4. And there may be well others as well. So Paul wants to address this situation. He's already referred to the need for unity in verse 27 of chapter 1, where he encourages them to stand firm with one mind, striving side by side for the faith of the gospel. And now he addresses it again in these four verses. And he describes in these verses what unity looks like and how a Christ-exalting culture within the church can be developed. This is just as applicable for us today as it was for the Philippians. So let's read these four verses together. So, if there's any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit... Any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being of full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others as more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. You will notice that he begins the with the word so, referring back to his previous comments. This threat of disunity prompts Paul to ask the Philippians a question. And these are questions that we could well ask ourselves too. The first one, we see it in verse 1. Has been a Christian brought you any encouragement? Have you experienced any encouragement from Christ? You notice that he uses, um, uh, he prefaces the statements by saying any. You're looking for any act of encouragement in your life. Any time when Christ has really been with you in difficult times. The answer, of course, is yes. Of course we have. Are you encouraged by the knowledge that Christ is interceding for you in heaven? Yes, we should be, of course. And really, there's an implicit uh, challenge here with Paul. If so, if you've been encouraged like this, if so, there's something I want you to do. Have you found any comfort in times of isolation and loneliness? Have there been times when his love has just touched your heart? Have you experienced something of the love of Jesus that led him through the loneliness of Gethsemane to the cross? If so, Paul says, there's something I want you to do. Have you experienced something of the Holy Spirit in your life? His power, his presence, his intimacy, his guidance, his presence warming your heart when you worship him and sing praises to him, or when the word comes alive when you read scripture? If so, there's something I want you to do. Have you felt the affection and support of your brothers and sisters in Christ? Have you experienced something of their love and their sympathy and their help in, in your time of need? Have you felt their support and encouragement? If so, there's something I want you to do. And Paul goes on to say, now if you do these three things which I'm going to outline, which I'm asking you to do, then... I will be absolutely bowled over with joy. You will be demonstrating what a Christ-exalting culture looks like in church. You'll be showing how church really should be. These three things can be summed up in three words. Harmony, humility and helpfulness. Let's look at them first in, in turn. He wants us to live a life of harmony where 
we are like-minded, where we value the same things, we aim for the same goals, we have the same love one for another. We have that sense of togetherness and fellowship as we live out life together with common goals, goals which exalt the Lord Jesus Christ. And together we represent him to the world and the area particularly in which we live and serve. So life, live a life of harmony, the first. Secondly, he encourages us to live a life of humility. I don't want to see any rivalry, no competition, no one-upmanship, no lording it over one another, no competitiveness. It's all right to compete in sport, but it's not appropriate in church. We're not competing against one another. I don't want any conceit. Don't think more highly of yourself than you ought. Always consider others and count others more significant than yourself. So care for others more than you care for yourself. This is what Jesus did, of course. He did not assert his own rights. Paul talks about this much more in verses 5 to 11, which is our next blog.